everybody, Manifestors, it's Tarkon back with another video. I want to ask you a question. Just who the hell do you think you are? That's right. I want you to think about that. <laughs> I'm not yelling at you. I'm not challenging you to do anything except challenge who you think you are. I want to chat briefly about an idea called consensus reality. And this is something that we suffer from. All of us suffer from this idea. These ideas about ourselves, about the world, about the order of things, about what reality is that has been implanted in us, has been taught to us, has been spoon-fed to us since the time, well, since we can remember, really, since we were in the cradle. Right? Consensus reality. The sky is blue. No, it's it's more purple. No, it's blue. We all say it's blue, therefore you must say it's blue. What if you actually see it as purple, but you have to agree that it's blue? Because if you don't agree that it's blue, you're going against consensus reality, and life can become very troubling. At least that's the threat. That's the threat that comes from institutions on high. And when I talk about institutions, I'm talking about institutions of thinking reality institutions that we have collectively propped up by the way because at some point they served us at some point in our history as humanity these institutions served us they're not serving us any longer we're moving past them or at least we have a very strong even collected collective and yes consensual desire consensual collective desire to move past them and i think so much of what we're seeing out there right now is a manifestation of that desire, that desire for change, that desire to move past the institutions, the consensus reality, the collective understanding of ourselves and what reality is, that is no longer serving us. And just like personal beliefs, limiting beliefs, at some point we adopted because they served us at that point, no longer serve us. And so, therefore, as individuals, we're called upon, somehow feel called upon, feel this urge to reach for more, to find more answers, to find channels like this, to find books on the topic, to try to understand, moving beyond our understanding of ourselves, you see. <clears throat> and we translate that into this idea of desires, I want the money, I want the car, I want the relationship, because that would be something different. That would be something different than what I'm used to. And I'm yearning for change because as beings, and especially I'm not just talking about physical beings that evolve in a physical sense. Well, that's important too. But I'm talking about our spiritual evolution. As spiritual beings in a human body, in a physical body, having a physical experience, third dimensional experience. We're always, always wanting to move past ourselves. That's the whole nature of spirituality. The whole nature of spirituality is not to stand still and be a stump. Why do we come into this environment and challenge ourselves? It's to grow, and it's to grow on a spiritual level. It's to expand on a spiritual level. It's to expand our understanding of ourselves and what all this stuff means, what existence means. Even on a spiritual level, we ponder these things. We, we try to get to the bottom of these things, right? But at some point, we felt we, we trapped ourselves in this third dimensional reality. And we decided that it was more dangerous to reach for expansion than to remain the same, than to be stumps. To be, to be a society, a culture, a species of stumps walking around, terrified of changing, terrified of thinking anything new, saying anything new, listening to things that we don't agree with, that challenge our, our preconceived notions of things or things that we've been spoon-fed by our culture, by our family, by our, by, our, by our country, by our education, by any, everything, by the media especially, because that's become our new church, our new authority in our culture, right? The media, the ministry of truth, as I like to call it. <laughs> what did the ministry of truth say? Did they approve this message? Did they put their stamp uh, 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 of approval on this message? No. They didn't, at least I hope they didn't, because if they did, that means I need to change up my message. But I was thinking about this a little bit, and I'm not going to pretend that there's going to be a whole lot of focus to this video, guys. This is going to be more like Deep Thoughts by Tarkon. I'm starting a little playlist of Deep Thoughts by Tarkon. I think there's already one or two videos on that playlist. Check it out. <laughs> Sometimes I think about things 
And then I go, turn on the camera. Let's talk about consensus reality. I think it's important. I think it's something I've been thinking about a lot because, of course, I also observe things. You know, I'm not, I'm not the, the pure guru. I wouldn't want to be the pure guru. I also came here to have a physical human experience and to live challenges. And I have them. And I challenge myself all the time and I debate myself all the time. And I, sometimes I question myself. Well, I question myself very often, as a matter of fact. I even question the ideas that I put forth here to you guys. I have to. You have to. All right? Because, again, what part of what I'm saying comes out of this consensus reality part and what part of, of what I'm saying is actually me reaching beyond that? So there's always a need to challenge yourself in order to grow so that you don't remain a stump or become a stump. But understanding... You know, that, that these things that we're reaching for right now, individually and collectively, and we see so much out there, we see this expression of our collective psyche right now manifesting itself in, in very many various ways, but, but seemingly uh, unstable ways. Like we've all sort of uh, lost our collective minds, <laughs> right? Have we all gone insane? Yeah, we have. We have, you know, what's, 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 what the idea, I've, I've thought about this a lot, you know, the idea of the guy out there who's rambling to himself, walking down the street, talking to himself and people, God, that guy's a little, he's lost it. Well, what he's lost most likely is his understanding or his acceptance of the consensus reality. This idea that we must agree upon a certain set of rules of, of the nature of reality and the nature of truth. And if we don't, then we are somehow going to exist outside of that realm of consensus, outside of that sphere of consensus, where within that sphere is where we get uh, we get approval, don't we? And isn't that, man, approval, the thing we are so addicted to? And yes, you as well, and me as well. Because we want those things, we want approval. The things we come to law of attraction for, ultimately come down to approval on some level i want that money because I, I think people will love me if i have it i'll be popular people will envy me they will approve of me doors will fly open i want that relationship from the person because i need them to approve of me because i don't have or think i have the power to approve of myself and to follow the beat of my own drum right now if they don't love me how can i love myself if they don't tell me that i'm okay how can i feel okay they don't tell me that I'm good enough by giving me their, their constant approval and undivided attention. And how can I be okay? How can I feel good enough in myself? But we're crying out for that. We're crying out for a sea change of this type of thinking, of, the, of what the consensus reality has been. Right? That's why we're out there flinging rocks at everything blowing things up, screaming in people's faces, trying to get, get you to think like me. You must agree with me because your thinking is wrong. We're changing the consensus reality and you better come along or you're an outsider or you're suspicious or you will be labeled as something undesirable. How many times have we seen that play out in human history? How well has it worked for us? Never, it never, ever, ever has worked for us, ever. Ever. And see what the screamers and the and, and those people right now out there, what they fail to understand, what they don't know is themselves, their own power. Because they st still are stuck in that thinking, in that consensus reality thinking that they are they are not connected to the world, to the universe. They are separate from it. That, that they don't have the power to change themselves. That something else, something bigger than them has power over them. And that they must topple that thing in some way. They must fight against the reality that they perceive, which is only a, a reflection of their inner state of being, their individual inner state of being, and a reflection of our collective inner state of being. Because that we agree upon through the consensus reality, you see, through the consensus that we agree, oh, we are all oppressed. We are all victims. Look at these power structures oppressing us all the time. But you see, by doing that, we're actually using the tool that the power structure has used against us for eons to continually prop up the power structure. We think we overthrow one system 
out there in the reality and somehow magically a better system is going to come along. No, it's the same system in a different color, different shape, different form, different words, slightly different flag, different, different symbols, a different crest, a different face representing it. And we think we've changed something. Because anytime you try to change something out there in the world, you try to push for something out there in the world, nothing moves really. There's the illusion of it moving. There's that illusion of change because it is all just an illusion. But there are those power structures that we have collectively over time put into place, by the way. Yes, we have put them into place through our consensus, our collective consensus, that we're going to put this power structure in place that's going to have control over our lives. And then we at some point have convinced ourselves collectively that we have no control. Now, the only way to regain control is to overthrow this power structure and replace it with another power structure and on and on and on it goes. And so we never seem to be free. We never feel that we are free. Because again, we've plugged into that consensus reality, that idea that this is all separate from us. We have no control over it. There's something bigger in my life that has control over me. You know, isn't that just easy? Isn't that just easy and isn't that just lazy? Because what that means is I never have to take responsibility for myself for who I am, what I think and focus on most of the time. Never have to take responsibility over my mind, my heart space, right? My understanding of myself, because if I can just go scream at people and blame them for my problems, I'm scotch free, right? I'm scotch, I'm, I'm, that's it, I'm home, I'm home free or whatever the damn term is, I don't know. But I think you, I, I hope you get what I'm trying to say here. It comes down, it's the same, it's the same uh, kind of thing that we do on an individual level where we think, well, we want change, but we're not willing to be the change. We're not willing to be the ones that understand that we are consenting to a certain type of reality. And the moment we stop consenting to that reality and we focus on adopting another reality, that's the only way change is going to happen. Not by me making you see it and think it and forcing you to do it and screaming at you and burning your thing down. That's not how it's going to happen. It's the same. I try to scream at that institution, that, that seemingly towering uh, monolith that I'm going to throw rocks at. Thing. I'm going to topple it eventually. And when I topple it, I'll finally be free. But your very fighting it is keeping you in chains. Because in order to fight something like that, you have to accept as truth that you have no actual power. That you are David fighting Goliath. But you created both David and Goliath. That's the thing you don't understand yet. That's the thing most of us don't understand yet. And that's why we continue to play the same little game and do the same little dance with our physical reality. This idea that, that there's something out there that we must destroy so that we can rebuild. But we never try to destroy or overthrow ourselves. And maybe that's really what I want to say in this video. You want change, you have to be the change. you got to change things at the source and the source is you and your focus and your perception of reality that's where you change and that's where we do this work that's the stuff i talk about and so many other coaches talk about so many other teachers talk about when we talk about the subject of manifesting and reality creation and law of attraction because you think, again, and I said this in the last video, you think right now it's about your specific person. It's about the money that you want. It's not. It's about so much more. You're just using those things as a symbol for the change that you're craving. But the change, you still think it's out there. You think it's out there. This is the, the fallacy, you see. This idea that I, I, if I can get that approval, that consent from some outside authority or force or system or institution or group of people or individual person, that that somehow will validate me because I'm not good enough or big enough on my own. When in fact, what we're saying is not only are you good enough and big enough on your own, you made all this shit happen and you're making it happen now. And the moment you realize that, you'll understand that you don't need to overthrow anything out there. What you need to overthrow is yourself. Yourself. That which you have come to accept as truth about yourself, and as truth about reality, and as truth about the world, and as truth about your place in it. 
You're not just a cog in the machine. You are the machine. You created the machine. Now, what does that look like? See, now I'm not talking about overthrowing yourself. You're going to go, what are you going to do? You're going to smack yourself in the head, right? Well, we do that anyway. Like Abraham Hicks says, and I always love this, we smack ourselves in the head with a hammer over and over and over again because we think it's going to feel so good when we finally stop. We finally stop torturing ourselves and smacking ourselves in the head with that hammer. Oh, that'll be such relief. That's why we keep doing it. We keep picking at the scab because it's going to feel so good when we stop. So what does it mean to overthrow yourself? And I've talked about this a lot. It really comes down to very simple things. Challenge yourself. Challenge your thinking. Even your negative thinking, the, 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 the thinking that draws you back whenever you reach for something that, is, that seems to be so far beyond yourself or so far beyond your reach, it never is. Because if you can conceive of it, then you've already created it. It's already there. You just have to train your mind to see it, to perceive it, because it's already there, but you're looking over here. It's over here, and you're looking over here going, where is it? Where is it? And it's going, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. That's what we're doing. That's what most of us do through most of our existence, most of our waking hours. We think we're not in control, and we think that the problem of us not being in control or feeling in control is somehow somebody else's fault. It's the world, it's the government, it's this thing, it's my education, it's my circumstances, it's my victimhood, it's my parents, it was my sixth grade gym teacher. No, no, it's you, and the moment you understand that, all that stuff goes away. It's the moment you understand and accept that, you then you have the power you've had it all along but you'll understand that you have it and you'll understand how to wield it for good you don't need to change anybody else or convince anybody else of anything or scream at anybody else throw things at anybody else you need to overthrow yourself you're the only tyrant in your life you're the only dictator in your life you're the only one keeping yourself from having what it is that you want and I, I, I'm not at fault to stop blaming me, Tarkan. Why are you blaming me? I'm not blaming you. You've been doing it on, on automatic by default because you, yes, you've been part of this idea of this consensus reality. Break with that by breaking with those ideas in yourself. You know, don't try to convince your parents and your family and your friends and your government to think differently. You need to start thinking differently. You need to start looking at yourself differently. You need to start seeing how this stuff really works for once and for all. You need to start seeing that it's not the X that you need to convince or the thing, or I got to convince the lottery ticket to have the right numbers on it. I got to do, you know, no. The only person you have to convince is yourself. That's the work. That's where you do the work. Okay. Everything else is lazy. It is laziness and it's taking, it's irresponsibility. Blaming others. It's time to stop that now. Challenge yourself. And I've said this. I say this in my coaching. Stop ex just accepting these, this dialogue that's in your head all the time. I can't do this. This is too hard. They did this, and then they did that, and then they said that. Stop it. Stop it. It doesn't matter. You're accepting it as truth. Therefore, it will be your truth, your concrete truth, for as long as you accept it as such. Don't you see? Stop it. Tell your mind, hey, what you're saying right now is bullshit. It doesn't make any sense. What about this and this and this and that? Give yourself examples of the opposite of what your mind is constantly arguing with you. That you don't have any power. That things don't work out for you. Of course they do. Make that list. Make that damn list of things working out for you. Do it. It seems so insignificant. I understand that. And I know that when I say it, and I know when I was first on this path and on this journey and some people told me that, I'd roll my freaking eyes. Just tell me how to get the thing I want. I don't want to make any damn lists. I don't want to sit there in my head and start arguing with myself. But that's what you need to do. I'm sorry to tell you, but that's what it takes. That's the work part. And if you really truly want what it is you want, you'll do that. You'll challenge yourself. You will... Organize and construct a coup d'etat within your own mind. 
within your own understanding, you will overthrow your old understanding of reality and you will begin to look for the new understanding of reality. And the only source of that is yourself, it is your higher being, your inner being, that larger part of you that is still focused and non-physical, that's constantly communicating with you through your emotional guidance system. Pay attention. Start to pay attention. Stop yelling and screaming at other people. Stop throwing this. If I tear that down, everything will be better. If I get him to change, everything will be better. If I get her to be different, everything will be better. Because it's their behavior that's, that's causing all my problems. If you really think that, you have no place being here. Watching this channel or learning about this material. You just don't. You're not ready for it yet. How do you know if you're ready for it? When you sit down and go, you know what? I take responsibility for my life. I take responsibility for what I've manifested so far. I'm not blaming myself, but I'm taking responsibility for it. And now I'm going to take a look at how I can change myself, how I can overthrow and change my preconceived notions of myself and who I am. And yes, even the shit I've been taught my whole life by my parents, but I'm, gonna blame, I'm not going to blame them either anymore. That's a hard thing to do. And maybe that's what forgiveness actually means when people say forgive. Maybe that's what it means, but whatever words you want to use, it comes down to this. It comes down to taking personal responsibility and understanding that your reality, that you are the source of it, always, always have been and always will be. So what are you going to do about it? You going to go burn down a building or are you going to burn down the structure, right? The tower right here in your mind that you have constructed and upheld and propped up all this time. It's time to take responsibility now. It's time to do the change and do the work. Okay, guys? Topple that idea that consensus reality in your own mind. Topple yourself. This is where the revolution starts. Right here and only here. Okay? But don't take my word for it. Try it. <laughs> so, I guess, yeah, that's my rambling video. Something that was on my mind. And uh, I hope that um, it did something for you. And if not, oh well, maybe the next one will. All right, guys. Thank you for watching, and if you are watching, I'm going to say this, please subscribe if you haven't already, please hit like on this video if you do indeed like it, and share it with whoever you think might benefit from this message. If you want to join the Facebook group, there's a link for that down below. If you want coaching, there's a link for that. If you want to leave me a donation, and thank you for everyone who's done that. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, please, you can do that down below in the description box as well. Okay, guys? So, food for thought ramblings from Tarkon. Until next time, take care. Happy manifesting. Happy toppling. And bye-bye. Mm -hmm.